First of all, thank you so much for joining in, guys. So today we have Jitain, Priyal, we have Abhi, who have passed CPA, we have Nitin also, and I know uh, there are a lot of serious faces there. I hope everyone is not so serious about this because this is the first time I'm interacting with so many participants, including our students as well, because I thought this time thoda different getting it. And we'll have the students also asking the questions rather than me interviewing the people here who have passed. So as you know, first of all, congratulations uh, for passing the USCP examination. Serious faces which are coming up here. And I know the nervousness of some of them because they are interacting with all the students today. So don't worry, log hai. So whatever they ask the questions be on there, I will be there with you in the webinar. If they ask any questions here and there, I'll support you. Okay, so first starting off with Jitain. So Jitain, how was your experience of passing the USCPA? Before I move on to the participants with their questions, we just want to know your journey one by one of each and every one. And then we'll go to the questions from. For me, sir, it was surreal. I would say I am still not over it, to be very honest. I had a list of things to do once I thought that I will, once I will pass the exams, these are the things I will do. And uh, I haven't done any one of it <laughs> over the weekend. Uh, what I did is I just, I was not sure how my weekend went, to be very honest, since I'm still grasping the excitement. Maybe I will be normal from tomorrow once my office work starts. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, it's it's a great feeling, sir, uh, to be very honest. And uh, seeing the respect you get from various places, you know, once you clear the exams, it's kind of something which I haven't hoped for before because I was anyways working uh, for the last 11, 12 years. I have my work experience. But the kind of questions I got once I posted that on LinkedIn, uh, it's kind of surprising for me because... I got questions by people asking, okay, so how uh, should I get placed to an MNC? And I was like, okay, I just, like, I have been working in MNCs for the last 11, 12 years. And I am getting these questions just because I cleared the exam yesterday. <laughs> so it's kind of surreal for me, uh, surprising and uh, joyful uh, to the least. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a great experience for me, sir. Because Jitin, you work in Amazon also, so that can be one of the reasons why people are asking you, how can we get placed, I guess, in Amazon, that that would be the question more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I was working in Amazon before I cleared the exams also, oh, so okay. <laughs> that's, that's the funny part uh, with the questions which I got in. Great to see that experience. Uh, what about Priyal? Priyal, how was it? It's amazing feeling like I didn't expect that in a nine months of period is cleared this CPA and it's amazing feeling like uh, after failures in CA final and all and getting that success is like amazing. For me, it's like amazing. No, I saw that balloon kind of celebration. So uh, that's where a lot of them said me on LinkedIn that that was uh, one of the creative stuff. I know Jitin will give credit to me for that, <laughs> but then I, I really didn't help her actually, to be honest. Abhi, kya, kaise lag hai bhai? Uh, it was a great experience. First, I was very nervous about uh, whether to go for Simandar education or not. I was thinking, then when I interact with you, how you, how to help me a lot, starting from the evaluation. And now also you are helping in the resume how to interact with the people. I had a great experience. So Abhi is the youngest among all of them in our uh, student crowd. I think that you can understand Abhi is also a top scorer in Samandar with audit of 94. Wow. So I think no one have gone so close to the score of 94 in audit. So I think that I know you're done with the two subjects and the score of 98 in rec and 91 in FAR. I think Students are more than the alumni, they are back of Nitin. Well, sir, up Nitin se baat ki jay ki, what is that he ate on that day to get 98 in regulation and 91 in pass? And I mean, that's an unbelievable score in one month. I don't have Gaurav here because Gaurav also scored 98 in red. But then, to be honest, Gaurav didn't write another section, but in your case, you wrote far and red together in a month and scoring 98 and 91. And I know Jitin is also seeing me, sir, maybe 92 Mara on farm. I know that, but uh, Jitin, how was the experience first to top score of 98 in rec? That is something many of them will ask. But before that, how was the experience after seeing the scores of 98 and 91? I know far is the most voluminous among all of the sections in CPA. So how was the feeling after far and rec? Uh, so first of all, thank you so much, sir. 
and uh, I didn't never expected that I will score this much scores. Uh, I was just expecting that I will I just have to pass, so I have to score seventy five. And I'm never prepared, keeping in mind that I have to score this much. Uh, it's quite overwhelming for me, and be, uh, because I'm getting a lot of messages on all the platforms that what exceptional I have done to get this much of marks. I I don't know what to answer them, but uh, all I can say is that. Uh, uh it take it will take some time to grasp that actually i have scored this much marks that's it but, but all, everyone in my family and my friends are happy that i am doing something uh, uh great kind of thing in this superb nitin i think all the toppers tell like that only that what did they do special so they have done normal thing and they have got top so that is how the feeling is so now because i don't Sir. want it to be more interactive with shripal and the alumni it is more of the students Yeah, one yeah. thing i would like to mention as nitin mentioned that uh, he is getting messages and getting overwhelmed with it for me uh, because i am an mcom basically and after that i haven't done any professional courses apart from the cpa thing and i started this in 2016 with another institution and then it did not worked out and i left it for a year then i rejoined simandar and uh, since then it was nice one thing i would like to say is that there are two Uh, special days in my life where i felt like a celebrity one is when i, I got married <laughs> people were you know i mean people were all around to click pictures of you and you are like okay fine <laughs> and then when i cleared cpa like i'm getting i was getting so many messages i'm still getting messages it's like okay it's fine like people are asking for advice and everything but it feels surreal it feels like you're a celebrity you know anyways guys so over to you because i know the session is completely planned for the students so i've just spent uh, 12 to 13 minutes to talk to them so all i have questions so just before that guys let me tell you lot of them uh, had one doubt that only ca ko ye marks aate hai kya because uh, only chartered accountants pass cpa is it very difficult for a people who is not a ca cannot clear cpa so there were a lot of uh, misconceptions like that so uh, priyal is also not a ca uh, abhi is not a ca jitain is not a chartered accountant so please don't label that that ki ye log ca isliye ye log pass ho rahe nothing like that so this time it is a completely different thing it has nothing to do with that but good that we have people here more than me i think they are the one so would talk more about that and what was their experience so guys straight away with the questions so i will unmute a lot of them who have the questions if you can just raise hands so i can just unmute some of them here yes guys go ahead yes priti go ahead yeah thanks shripal um hi everyone and uh, firstly congratulations to all uh, the guys who actually scored uh, such great scores and uh, i think that are a lot of things that today the audience will learn from you guys so my main question was um, during your journey um, in in any of the papers for that matter uh, have have there been any times where you kind of really lose focus and uh, because i'm i'm actually losing a little bit of focus and uh, concentration so because of my work uh, pressure so how is it that or what is what those those two or three things that you would advise uh, for us to come back on track so i think guys uh, so what preeti is talking about is a loss of focus and this question i'll i have to give to jitain because preeti is a working professional so she is working with cisco and uh, has been there for almost uh, a good number of years i think jitain i have already been a working professional so how did you manage jitain uh, your work schedule along with cpa i think that is a lot of working professionals are also there today joined in so that is one common question and what did you do to uh, retain the focus i know you shared some gym pictures so i think that is something i wanted to know today so what was that workout thing uh, which you shared on linkedin so please go ahead jitin so uh, i start with uh, with 2016 to be honest and i don't want this to be a long answer because i have so many things to say but i will make it very short so when i started in 2016 uh, i was working in pwc which was big four and obviously you have work pressure there but somehow my work was related to regulation so i appeared for that paper and i cleared it right and then things did not worked out so what i learned from that phase of my cpa journey which i ended in uh, 2017 end is that 
you have to be focused you know it's not a sight thing which you can do when you are working you have to give uh, 50% or maybe more than that focus on your studies and then equal focus mm-hmm. on your work because obviously you're going to pay your fees from your salary right that's that's exactly. what my case was exactly. so you can you know you have to balance it and what i learned during the past year or so is that you have to make your study plan and you got to stick with it no matter what you know so it's very important that once you plan something you got to stick with that and you really have to stick with your plans uh i know there are days where you will feel like okay it it maybe you will you are losing focus you will do something else uh it happened with me too but there were some few days where i would let my mind wander maybe if i want to you know not study on a particular saturday and i am not feeling like studying on that very day maybe i will go out i will do what i what my mind wants me to do on that particular day you know but it's very important to get back on your uh, studying thing on the next day if you are going out on a particular saturday on an or partying on a friday it's fine as long as you don't do it for the rest of the weekend you know okay so okay. so if your mind mm-hmm. want to lose focus let your mind wander but recollect it after you're done with it don't continue doing it for an extended period of time uh okay. that's one thing another thing is uh so i actually i did a weight, weight loss transformation you can say so my weight was around 94 kilos when i started with mm-hmm. samandar now i'm around 68 69 and what i find is that apart from your studies if you are working out if you are into another thing which can motivate you it also helps so there were days when i was like tired with my grueling study hours mm-hmm. but i would see the transformation in me in doing something else you know and that kind of motivated me to believe in the fact that if you are doing something and you are seeing the results you mm-hmm. can g- keep motivated and i mean if you do something religiously you will get the results so for cpa it was not an instant thing because i am studying and i am not getting the results right after studying because i know i have to appear for my exams and then the results will be out and then i will see the results but for my other transformation journey i could see the results every week because every week i have to measure myself measure my weight and report to my personal trainer so that was one bit of motivation which i got uh to believe in the fact that if you do something religiously if you put efforts in it you will see the results so mm-hmm. i know it's not related to cpa but for me it was very close to my cpa journey because i started both the things uh together and both the same things reaped results for me so well, that's how that's, I... that's excellent that's excellent, <laughs> that's excellent. because um, i i was also a sports person and uh, yeah and like some somebody pinged about leaves uh, i took leaves before my exams so if i'm appearing for an exam take a couple of days leave before my exam nothing extensive like a week or two week i would say that if i consider all the four papers i might have taken study leaves for around 20 to 24 days for all my four papers to get okay. and i would sacrifice like for example there will be leaves for new year right and there will be leaves for some puja holidays or independence day things like that so okay. if i always try to merge my those leaves with my paid leaves so that you know if there is a holiday on 15th august i would take a leave on 13 and 14th august and will get an extended holiday and will utilize that in my studies that's how i kind of planned it but again i partied in new year i partied partied on a christmas day a uh, sripal sir knows about it and he will ping me on what say what you are doing in us <laughs> <laughs> and not studying so i haven't sacrificed those things but yeah i haven't partied from 25th to 1st of january i partied on 25th i went back to my focus things on 26th to 30 and then i partied on 31st so you got to manage it in that that's Great. my take on it it's it's not a formula but that's how i perceived it i think we have on the youtube uh, comment rajesh is asking what's the trick for 98 in reg nitin 
So finally, we got question what we wanted. Yes, Nitin, tell us what were that five things which you did it to get that number. So the first main thing that I would suggest everyone to do uh, to do is multiple revisions because every in every revision we get to know a new thing and we are uh, with every revision we are able to retain the concept for a longer time. I personally experienced this that in my third revision. Uh, I was sure that I am able to retain the past uh, the past chapters, and uh, I am the number of the, my performance in MCQs and the tests were improving because I was tracking my performance in an Excel sheet on the revision basis. So I was able to see my progress, and all because of the multiple revisions that I did. And the first main thing is this, and second thing there are some few points that I want to discuss. So can I do it now? Yeah, yeah, Nitin, go ahead. That's what they want. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the main thing that I would suggest is to, uh, while doing revision, uh, please note down the topic uh, which you are facing difficulty or which you feel that uh, you are not able to retain it. So that uh, next time, uh, in a separate notepad, so that just before the exam days, uh, like a day or two days before the exam, uh, go through those topics and you will be easily able to recollect those topics in the exam. And in my, I, I did the same thing. And in my exam, I found out around five to six MCQs and one or two task-based simulations from those topics that I revised the day before. So I was, uh, and if I if I hadn't done this thing, I might not be able to recollect all those topics. So this is the second thing that I would like to suggest. And uh, the other thing is that uh, I, while I was revising, I was marking the noting down the uh, MCQs number on a notepad of every module wise. So that uh, in the next revision, I just wanted to, I, I know that on which questions I have to focus because the remaining questions I can easily answer again also because I did those answers, answered those questions correctly in the first time also. So my main focus was only on those questions, which I did wrong earlier. Yeah. And I know the uh, main thing that I learned from your videos with one of your interview with the uh, topper also, that how we can take the help of our family, like how uh, the guy took his mother's help in remaining on the track i did the same i told my mother to ask me on daily basis and it really i feel i really helped me a lot because i i because when she asked me i was kind of accountable to her that uh, because if i'm not studying then and if she asked me then i feel bad if i'm not studying then at that time so this thing worked for me uh, these are the few things that majorly i think are the reasons behind thank it so I think that's a fantastic thing and good to see that my video helped topper which we did the interview. Uh, so that is one good piece of advice. So I think to summarize guys what Nitin is telling, I think excellent thing doing multiple revisions, not one time, two time, but tracking the performances on Excel sheet, noting down the topic where you face difficulties, noting down the multiple choice questions in notepad where you are doing mistakes. And then check with your mom, the timetable and just inform her. Don't tell to your dad. I know what I miss. Right. So I think mom is a safe one among all of them. I mean, I, it might differ in the approaches. So uh, we have a big hunter at my home. Right. So that's why I'm always disciplined at my place. So I think parents definitely play a real big stuff in the success. And I always say when you're uh, successful, it is not you. It is actually your parents. So that is what uh, I would say everyone would agree here. So that's a great stuff, uh, Nitin. Thank you so much. I will unmute Bobby. Bobby, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. So in continuation to Preeti's question, I wanted to ask uh, how could how can we manage the whole revision, especially for FAR, since it is so voluminous? Uh, what should what exactly should be covered few days before the exam? Because we will not be taking much leaves from the work also. So how can FAR be covered in such a short span of time? Yeah, for FAR, the way I approached it, I haven't taken shorter time to study FAR. So I, I think I took around near about three months to study FAR without any longer leaves. Uh, I would utilize the weekends pretty well. And one thing which I did in order to retain the topics, as Bobby mentioned, I made sure to do a set of 20 or 30 questions on a daily basis from all the chapters. Even if, you know, I haven't read any particular chapter and I was in the process of reading 
section four or section five, whatever be it. Uh, apart from my regular study hours, I made sure to do at least 20 questions every day from all the chapters combined together, uh, which is over and above my study hours. So maybe I will do those questions while I was working. I will have that uh, MCQ thing open up in one of my screen and I will start answering them like every now and then one question at a time and then kind of review that question because there will be chapters which I haven't studied and while answering those, I would learn from that also. So that's how I kind of uh, worked around retaining so many, diff I mean, different topics for far. I know it's pretty huge. So I kept on doing that 20, 30, 20, 30 questions every single day for three months. Uh, that really helped me a lot. And once you're done with all your section and you, you're still doing that 20, 30 questions from all the sections combined, uh, you will get a feel of the exam period, right? Because in exam also you will do around 30, 33 questions for a single test set for far from all the sections combined. So I think that's one strategy which helped me both in far and audit. Uh, in both these exams, I kind of follow. So the next question is, Kindly share your preparation strategy. So we'll start with Priyal because it's been some time. I'm not hearing Priyal there. Yes, Priyal. What was your preparation prep strategy for CPA? I started with FAR and I, uh, I take lectures first. Then uh, in the same sequence that Becker provides, like first lectures, then MCQs, then simulation skill master videos and then after that I made a summary, a one pager summary of all the sub uh, all the uh, topics which I uh, think it's important like uh, uh, leases and uh, revenue and all. I made it a one pager summary for uh, which helps me in the last days of my operations and uh, after that I uh, I used to do the uh, unlimited te text, uh, test practices which helped me to retain that concepts or uh, topics uh, and after that i gave the mocks and where uh, wherever I, wherever i feel that uh, i am lacking somewhere so i write it down in my notes that yeah this part is uh, weaker for me and i just uh, do it like that only so that is important for me it's like uh, making a notes are very important on your own because uh, that helps you to retain that uh, topic abhi aapko kya lagta hai i mean aapne kya kiya tha what aapka preparation strategy i know aapka audit mein score bhi is 94 we have sumit also today he just joined in so sumit ko bhi 93 aaya congratulations sumit so i am picking up all the uh, subject high scorers so it's better that they also come in here and share their prep strategies so abhi aapka kaisa tha matlab aapne kya kiya tha charo section ke liye uh, as the pl says the strategy goes like that uh, first we have to watch the simander videos then after that back lectures skill master videos doing mcqs and uh, at last uh, uh, simulations but uh, but you have to revise it again and again go through the same process you will learn new and new things new and new concepts but uh, the uh, basic part you have to understand it don't cram it uh, you will lose in a uh, uh, exam you uh, uh, learn from each and every part of the book uh, you will know, uh, don't know from where the aicpa will ask you the question even the small part can be asked in a simulation and it costs you around 50 points. So I think that's an that's excellent piece of advice. So don't leave anything. I think all the people here would agree that uh, CP exams are like that. They not typically cover each and everything. Uh, so Samit, what was your strategy for audit? Because we have seen that 93 score and Abhi have scored in the last window 94. So oh. I'll uh, first go to you, Sumit, because you are the oh. fresh face now. So just now oh. join. So, uh, what was your strategy for audit, Sumit? Uh, so I think, see, uh, the main thing that you have to do is trust Becker completely. They are the best. They know what they're doing. And just follow them. You will, you will not go wrong. And uh, it's important to maintain consistency. Say, you, if, if you're not able to study for an elongated period of time, you will start losing that touch. So at least try to do one module every day. At least try to do something every day so that you are in touch with the subjects. I understand a lot of us are working professionals. If you're working in a, uh, 
if you're working in such an environment it's often very difficult to take out time but at least if you if not if you can't even take out time to study a more one module per day at least do 30 50 50 100 mcqs before you go to sleep that is very very important that at least that way you are in touch with the subject you are testing yourself on a day to day basis i used to do that every night before i go to sleep i used to listen to some soft music and answer 100 mcqs and then go to sleep uh becker does a fantastic job of personalizing the questions for you they have that ai software where uh, based on which answers you are weak at they generate those questions repeatedly and they test you regarding those topics so every night i made it a habit that before sleeping it it takes hardly less than one hour it will not even take one hour uh, and uh, if you are seeing those questions again and again it will maybe you can do 100 questions in 30 minutes and uh, so i used to do that religiously every day 100 mcq before you go to sleep that is very important other thing is in the exam so what i do is sometimes when i look at the question i look at a, a response i feel it's correct i take it immediately but that is that is wrong sometimes the question is asking for which is incorrect out of the four you will see one correct one and you will take it but that will be the wrong answer see what the question is asking for and what i did in the exam what worked for me is audit there is a lot of time there is no hurry there is lot of time you have 72 mcqs out of that 65 mcqs will be all theory hardly you will get some calculation based questions in audit so you have you have the time in the world and it's a 4 hour exam do not uh, you have to sit for all 4 hours do not think ki main tin ghante mein nikal jaunga you have paid money for 4 hours sit for 4 hours check recheck recheck the second time and then submit your testlets so what i used to do in the mcqs at least they give you the scratch paper i used to write answers on the scratch paper and then i used to go back and uh, 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 input the answers for all 36 mcqs so that is very important that way you are doing a double check you are uh, see over here there is uh, like in our office we have somebody who is preparing work somebody who is reviewing work you don't have that here you are only the preparer you are only the reviewer So, so it is a little audit based, but yeah, this is how I answer. Jite na nite na, you see, Sumit sir, typical audit answer. Yes. Yeah. So, and I, just I, to I, give I, some I, background, right? Yeah, just to give some background. See, I, I work in audit. Okay. So, whatever is taught in audit, uh, I do that on a day-to-day -day basis. Those those opinions, those templates, and all that, I draft that for a living. I do all of that on a day-to-day -day basis. so it was very important for me to do well on the audit paper not just passing passing so i had to pass that exam but it was very important for me for my own self morale to do very well on the audit exam because if i was not able to do well on audit how would i justify uh, it to myself right so it was very important that audit was see of course i did not learn many new things when i was going through the auditing course but i really enjoyed the way tim gerty and uh, michael brown and everyone taught uh, for Uh, it, it was very refreshing for me that i was actually enjoying what i was uh, learning and that is very important thank you so much thanks a lot uh, so priyal question comes up is after multiple failure in ca final exams can you pass cp exam that's the question from komal makela in the youtube tell me priyal uh yeah it's uh, definitely you can pass cpa of course i am not C uh, i am also a failure and passed it out so yeah of course you can do it <laughs> so uh, would it be uh, so my so radhika's question is sir my attempt for ca inter group 2 is due in november 2020 and i'm pursuing bcom from igno is it a right time to start my preparation for us cpa what do you think priyal CA yes, you can do it. Uh, yeah, it's a, a good time to start for CPA and uh, uh, for CPA it's like a different course. It's not like that uh, you are a CA that you can do it uh, very well. It's not like that. In in CPA you have if you have a concept clarity, then you can of course you can pass it out right. So it's not like that. You, I am a CA inter. I can uh, can I pass it out or not? It's not like that. Just focus on concepts. Things will definitely uh, work it out for you. That's it. So I think Radhika Komal, the conceptual clarity is important. It's not about chartered accountancy qualification as such. So uh, that is something which we can do. So Nitin and uh, Nitin, we have a question. Would it be a right time to start CP after completing CA? I know Nitin, you are a chartered also, so you would be the right candidate to pick up that question. 
So, would it be a right time to start CP after a CA? Yeah, it depends on you. Like, for what purpose you are planning to do your CP. So, if you if you have the plans, uh, which can help you in this earlier phase of uh, your post qualification, that if you immediately do the CPA and then you can. Uh, uh, if you want to begin your career in the U.S. practice right now, then it's the best time for you to do your CPA. And if you want to first uh, try your uh, try your hand in Indian practice, uh, and then if you want to go for any kind of global opportunities, then you, I think you can wait for that. Uh, wait for the doing your CPA because you might, uh, if you get interested in Indian practice only, then you might not uh, need to do your CPA. I feel that. Okay, so uh, guys, how was the experience in uh, India? Because a lot of them have that uh, things. So when the CP exam happened in India, how was the prometric experience? I know Sumit is there, Priyul is there, Abhi, Jitin, uh, Nitin. So starting off with Jitin, uh, how was the experience at the prometric? For me, it was super smooth. Like I have heard things from other people that uh, the experience. Froze screen and everything. Uh, the system was slow or some admin issues. I haven't faced any issues uh, during my exams. To be very honest, for me it was just like how it will be. It 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 was in US, so it was super easy and I would say more straightforward than US, because in US they would check your rings and I have like three four rings on my hand. Uh, here it was not a problem at all. They haven't asked me at all about my. Uh, rings uh, in the us a couple of times i faced that issue that they would ask like inquire about your rings and everything for me it was super nice uh, i haven't faced any issue in india well, what about you nitin i do haven't faced any difficulty in prometric both the times uh, i reached the center a little bit earlier and, and if the seat was vacant they they accommodated me and uh, in the system also everything was working fine and uh, that's it. I, I don't have any complaint about the prometric service in India. Okay. So one question comes up is how many times we need to revise before our main exam? So uh, who would like to pick that up? Abhi, what do you think? How many times we need to do a revision? Uh, you have to do it three to four times for me. For, because I am not an ex uh, experienced person. For me, to, to uh, every time you will do, you will learn new and new things, new and new concepts. Uh, but try to do more and more MCUs like simulations, and the uh, main part in audit is that you have to learn uh, learn from the transaction cycle. They ask a lot of questions from that. Uh, you will find a great difficulty in choosing between the ten options. That's uh, 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 from there they generally test you the real knowledge of the audit. So apart yeah. from far again, we have an audit. How many? How to manage time while doing simulation, research-based sims, how to pick up right information from attachments, and will thresholds be tested? And the second question is, will threshold be tested in reg? So reg I'll give to you, Nitin. Audit I'll give to you, Sumit. So how sure. to manage time while doing simulations, research-based sims, and how to pick up right information from the attachments? So audit, first of all, uh, the good news is there's a lot of time in audit. You can do your... Uh, you can do it very comfortably and it gives you adequate time that uh, you're not under pressure to complete questions and move on. Your MCQs are mostly all theory based. So uh, in order to, in the MCQs, the biggest challenge is out of four, two options straight away will be illogical. You can eliminate them, but two will harass you, two will confuse you. It is very difficult to pick between those two as to which is the correct answer in, in a lot of the questions. So. Please be very careful about that. And that's where my, my tip of writing those uh, on the scratch paper comes into place. Any question you are uncertain about, write it there, either A or B, come back later. Don't spend too much time on that question. Move on, go to the next questions. Uh, and the other thing is sometimes that is a psychological block. When you start answering the other questions, you start feeling comfortable with those other questions. You will come back and look at it with, with a fresh perspective. Then you'll say, Are this answer is this. Uh, that that will make you a little more certain. Don't be in a hurry. Audit there is enough time. You can spend one minute per MCQ, and after that you can spend about twenty minutes per sim. Correct me if I'm wrong, Abhi. Uh, what is your experience? Yes, you are right. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, uh, generally, we usually stuck in two two points. 
फ्लू but if you if you if you really know that uh, i know what i know the answer to this was b and i marked it as b then it's fine but if you got that answer correct by fluke no then read why that answer is correct that is very yes, very yes, important yes, yes. becker becker does a very good job of explaining why that answer is correct yes. why every other answer is wrong huh. so uh, it's Some, up to again you have to you have to uh, you have to be your own conscience coach over there if you feel that uh, you're not sure why, why you got this answer right don't just move on saying uh, because you're not going to get the same question in the exam it's not going to repeat obviously and there are 1600 or 1700 mcqs in audit you are not going to remember that we don't have that kind of a memory so it is very important to build those concepts and another tip that i would like to give it applied to me uh, because i i work in audit so uh, so i by as i was going into the course i already knew i had little bit of knowledge maybe not 100% maybe not 70% but maybe in some topics 50% 60% knowledge so what i used to do i used to answer the mcqs before going to the lecture what that does is it gives you a little bit of confidence and of course this could apply to everybody who is suppose somebody is a is working in tax if in reg you are doing that it will it will help build that confidence because honestly i'll give you a little bit of background here like priyal said i have struggled with ca and uh, my self confidence before i started cpa was that was a, was very very low was at an all time low shripal knows this my cpa journey started 3 4 months back and uh, in the circumstances that started maybe that's a discussion for another day but my self confidence was at an all time low and the day i got my result i felt a lot better because uh, i got the results that i put in efforts i got proportionate results this course will give you that you respect the course the course will respect you with good marks so uh, the next question comes up uh, thank you so much sumit abhi sumit that was a very honest answer <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so i know sumit guys because sumit has been there with my ey days uh, so like almost what 6 uh, years back now uh, so yeah. jitain the question comes up is to start off with bc in december what would be the strategy since the classes are not completed yet for first timers like us who are having work pressure as well the way i uh, handled all the four papers i always completed the baker thing before attending simandhal live classes that's how i approached uh, each and every paper uh, and to be very honest uh, it helped me super well you know because once you complete baker you know what are the things you understand about it and you know what are the things you have questions on right and then if you go into live classes you have that flags with you that okay these are the topics i am not sure about and i'm going to shoot questions on these topics to shripal sir or whoever that's the approach i took but if you don't i would encourage you to you know even if you don't uh, have time to attend or you don't have your scheduling to attend the live classes you go through the backers thing entirely and then go through the recorded videos for simandar uh, because there will be other people who will be asking questions and you might get your doubt answered there as well in the recorded videos uh, so that's how i approached it even if you are not able to attend the live classes so in far to i think they have asked thousand questions to yes me. <laughs> the recordings which i have seen uh, so everyone was telling sir matlab itne questions far me i think i and suraj had had to take that because a lot of them have joined cp after a long period of time many of them are very weak in the basics so i had absolutely no problem uh, so in bc how to approach written sims so i would uh, request priyal jitain or abhi i think all the three on the bc part so jitain what's your quick take on bc written communication sims yeah even i was also kind of thoughtful about the written uh, sims and i was kind of nervous like do i need to memorize things and write it there uh, i followed the structured uh, approach which baker suggested like there will be an intro and then you have your body and then there's a conclusion kind of thing 
but to be very honest like when you get the answers uh, when you get the questions for the written sim if you have studied the entire becker material you will have your answer in your mind trust me that's that's what happened with me i did not memorize anything for uh, bec i just studied the bec from beckers and practiced questions and was ready for my exam but kind of nervous for my written com but when i get the questions for my written communication i realized that okay i know the answer and the way i structured it is how becker suggested and you don't have to be spot on with your answers you just have to put in the key words or key phrases which relates to your question that is very important and trust me you will you will get it like it's not difficult at all uh, the written communication is just that you will just realize that okay you have studied this and it's just a matter of putting your thoughts together uh, in a written form that's how i approached it real what was your strategy for written communication sims in bc and some of them are asking me authoritative literature please understand guys i'm seeing in the comments if you will give authoritative literature then you'll copy from there only and write right i think i don't understand why you asking this question again and again there are no authoritative literature there is no open book system else you will copy from that book itself and write the answer I just want to again uh, clarify this i have been clarifying in all my videos and today again i'll clarify that there is no authoritative literature no open book system in bc priyal go ahead yes sir uh, for uh, written communication it's like uh, see the videos of uh, michel moshe and uh, mike pretenza uh, on becker they 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 provide very uh, precisely they uh, tell you how to write it, uh, the written communication part and they, that is sufficient for that you know you don't want to uh, mug up the things like i have to write this and that. this is uh, impossible to mug up that things so right? so uh, just stick to basics and uh, uh, you are done with abhi how uh, what was your strategy for written communication uh you must be well, uh, well versed about the english grammar where to use the uh, commas full stops and where to use the capital letters and try to insert the key points as much as as possible and do install the uh, we have a app like grammarly app they will always check they will always check. we can uh, apply it on the backers product as well they will check you uh, in the grammarly like spellings grammars and how that i have done now uh, what about nitin is uh, thresholds being tested in reg because a lot of them have that question when you are preparing for regulation so uh, nitin jitain priyal abhi where uh, uh, thresholds being tested in regulation what are those uh, amounts and numbers you need to remember nitin uh, i don't think so that they will they will test thresholds in the exam because there are number of thresholds and we won't be able to retain I remember all these thresholds in in the exam time so they don't test it also in the exam if they have to test it they i think they will mention that threshold in the question only and but you just know how to use that threshold by doing the calculation i think uh, they they don't ask about threshold we don't need to remember thresholds is there any important uh, thresholds or do we do we not need to remember there, any of the thresholds there is one mom and pop exception and uh, they you they test they generally test this a lot okay okay what about far strategy sir how do we manage financial accounting reporting yes guys take on far jitain yeah as i mentioned far was humongous and the way i was able to retain everything is that you have to practice practice and practice like i used to practice at least 20 30 mcqs daily for 3 months so you can imagine how many mcqs i have practiced for far uh and that was over and above my study hours uh, so it's very important to understand the concept and practice that those are the two important things for far or for any other exams to be very honest like you understand the con concept get a grasp of the concept and then practice 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 that's it uh, i mean that's that's how you're going to crack all the exams uh, not only far what's your piece of advice on financial accounting reporting far so me yep uh for far i would recommend uh, is the main thing we can do is uh, time management because it is one of the lengthiest exam and when i saw my exam paper i was totally scared because 
I almost uh, spent around two hours on the first two tessellates of the MCQs, and I was scared that how I will complete on the remaining three tessellates in the remaining three hours. So I did this mistake, and I would recommend all of you to uh, don't repeat this mistake. And you can work on this while giving the practice sets or in the, while doing the mock exams. So if you uh, learn how to manage the time in the mock exams, then I believe uh, you will have an idea like how much time you have to devote to an each tessellate and you can easily complete the exam because of uh, this time uh, uh, management issue i almost left around 2 3 questions in the task based simulations uh, which i believe uh, every can can work on this area priyal uh, what's your take on financial accounting reporting so actually uh, uh, time management is actually a uh, thing which we have to manage in uh, exams and uh, um, for uh, sims i i would suggest that don't uh, scare with the question it's like uh, eight nine exhibits uh, coming the paper and you just have to uh, see the question size and you just uh, scared once like so it's suggested though don't scare with the question write it down the important parts of that uh, in a paper sheet and uh, then solve the questions so uh, that's it uh, promise yeah so bhavya i have a question sir my question is there are times when we are stuck on a module which we would have decided to do in a day or two but it takes longer time so how do we manage this because this delays other modules i think especially audit uh, sumit and uh, and far is the second yeah. thing where i felt that so yeah. uh, sumit anything on audit so yeah audit uh, the first module itself is when you start uh, you will feel it's a little dry because it talks about all the reports and all of that you will feel it's a little dry there's no harm skip to m2 m2 m3 m4 is very practical it's fun and come back to m1 it's fine that's okay i did that because uh, i mean if i am saying it was dry i mean for everybody anybody else who is doing audit for the first time it would obviously be a lot more drier because it's it has to do with all those report templates there are a lot of templates to learn they are very important do not skip but for the temporary move to the more interesting topics all the all the cycles and all that are very interesting uh, and something that you can practically relate to as well and then come back to m1 that's fine you can do that uh, and shipal one more thing we can touch upon is uh, far sims in audit lot of people ask about this I think, yeah, far sims in what's your take on far simulations because i'll go to nitin also on the sims <laughs> part because i think that is one of the favorite question what sumit have asked because yeah. a lot of them are really afraid uh, that's what priyal was telling when they see the exhibits in the exam i think they get fainted only on that day itself and i faced that during my time so i can imagine now how it have been so it is uh, the exhibits the so many of the exhibits at least in our case it was not that much but still i have seen that so what is that jitin what is your take on the far exhibits uh, and in the far simulations especially and do authoritative literature do play a role because i don't know if teja is there because teja was sharing some details in telegram group day a uh, couple of days back that authoritative literature also gives an illustration of uh, the example below or something like that so that's where i wanted to touch on the sense is that open book system do really help the authoritative literature jitin yeah, uh, i i i can i can touch a little bit on that because uh, i did my audit first and i did not do far yet so i got a far sim i cannot tell which topic i'm not allowed to tell you which topic and uh, yeah just a tip for everybody please do not share uh, obviously all of us here know but for the, for the audience don't share with anybody what questions it can get you into trouble especially don't do it on facebook groups telegram groups because that leaves a trail audit trail so be careful about that i got an audit uh, i got a farsim on my audit paper that topic was relatively new to me i had not learned it before in indian gap or anything so what i did is i opened the authoritative literature read that asc and then answered it very comfortably no issues asc gives an example uh, jiten and nitin can elaborate from a far perspective yeah absolutely i totally agree it helps you a lot 
but it can only help you if you manage your time efficiently you know okay. if you have a very little time you don't have time to go to authoritative literature and search for the questions so time management is very important and the way you do time management is when you practice at home make sure that you have a set time during which you answer your questions that not only help you with time management but also will give you a flavor of the hurriedness in the exam which you might face so for me uh, when even i was practicing simulations or mcqs uh, in bakers also you have very long sims right so if you do that within a specified time period you get an idea like if what is the call of the question and then which exhibit you need to follow in order to answer those questions so for me it was all practice i, I haven't faced any issue in the exam related to i know many exhibits or four or five exhibits because i read the call of the question and i kind of gauged like which exhibit i need to follow in order to answer or what all topic i need to take from the exhibits in order to answer the questions but yes if you can manage your time pretty well in the last two testlets uh, authoritative literature helped me a lot uh, both in far and audit uh, i want to say so much about it for far but trust me it helps you a lot you know if you can know how to search authoritative literature in a tricky way it can help you a lot i cannot say more about it but it really helps <laughs> it really helped me in far and audit agree agree 100% from an audit perspective agree it say totally saved me i can say more than help me yes saved. same same here same yeah. here no, i but, passed my audit through al only <laughs> but yeah I, you got I to have, manage your time I, if you have don't if, if you don't have time there is no way you will search authoritative literature yeah. in your last two testlets because yeah. you will be tensed doing that nitin any tips on uh, simulations of far uh the same like jitin said uh we just have to understand the requirement of the task based simulation that way we can uh, find out like which exhibit we have to uh, open up and read it because most of the time uh, some irrelevant information is also given in the exhibits that we won't have to spend time on and if we is and if we properly understood the requirement uh, then i think we can save the uh, save time on reading all the exhibits uh so uh, manudeep have a question where do you get authoritative literatures in the online exam paper so manudeep uh, in all of our lectures we normally show the authoritative literature even in becker it is there so when you open the simulation the becker product you will find authoritative literature there so all our faculties have showed one or two simulation in their first lecture itself including me uh, in the far lecture also i have shown how to do that authoritative literature if you haven't followed that please go through those videos as and also the becker part also if you go through the becker product you will find the authoritative literature which works like an open book system but in a digital manner right uh, so shalini have a question i have a question on this should we follow time management on mock exams or even when we are doing prs on a daily basis yes uh, yeah jitin i can say like yes absolutely that's how i was doing in all my exams uh, even if you are practicing uh, make sure you follow the like initially you might not be able to do it but uh, make sure you do that like it it helps a lot if you follow that exact time management while you are doing your practice at home yeah uh, the, question, the next question uh, yeah i think so what you wanted to add uh, the thing that might Uh, funny when i say it but what i also did when i was doing I, i was able to do two mocks so i did those mocks wearing a mask because i in today's time that is very important <laughs> uh to, and because i wear glasses the glasses fog up so i wanted to <laughs> simulate that environment and uh, another tip that i'll give everyone the centers are cold so please carry a jacket so that you don't feel uncomfortable while you're writing the exam actually uh, i have a valid tip i haven't i haven't used the time management concept on the mock exam uh, i followed the sumit concept doing the 20 questions daily like before going to the sleep opening again uh, opening again a uh, mock papers and doing uh, 20 questions that's for it for me uh, so priya the next question and any suggestions for how you all prepared it in bc as it is heavily tested Uh, i don't want to tell the candidate name again uh, please don't go on the heavy testing and lower testing because as you know the ethic rules of aicpa it and uh, the chapter 1 and chapter 
like all the other chapters are also tested and all but yes any tips priyal what you did for it part b c6 uh, it's like a uh, backer sufficient but uh, in the uh, every group of uh, backer it says that it is not sufficient and all i don't think it's not sufficient it's uh, very much sufficient and you can do that and pass it out like uh, i think it's sufficient no yeah. i have also seen that uh, uh, them have that question on it part and a lot of them tell we should complement it with ninja and all so i don't know this ninja tinja but she no, has I, said i to i i they want i didn't refer any anything other than back uh, other than backers who um, it is sufficient uh, in backers uh, Yeah, I I faced uh, a few questions which were not from Baker to be very yes, honest yes, for IT. Yes, yes, yes. But those were, you know, uh, you could answer those out of common sense. Those were not like alien questions or rocket science questions from IT. So if you are kind of well versed with whatever is going on, you know, you can answer it. That's how I faced it. I I faced around four or five questions from IT which were not from Baker's, but it was not alien to me if I put it that way. Abhi, what's your take? I want to say, don't just focus on the books. Like uh, 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 research on the Google. Uh, if the if we have gone into classes, uh, research for the Google. Like the topic, uh, topic the study explaining. Research more and more. The more you research, the more you get about the topic. So I think uh, that's a very important piece of advice again. So though Becker is sufficient again, but please try to search on Google and. <coughs> Anything, sorry, if you want to go in deep, I think that is a very very important thing which you can take up. So, Wax John. So we have uh, one of the question from John: How to manage two papers preparations simultaneously in less than two months? I think only Nitin can tell that in one month, not in two months. Yes, Nitin, go ahead. I just gave two exams in a month, but I was preparing for both these exams for around four or five months. So, okay. so would right. would that make me eligible to answer this question? <laughs> So I think Nitin, you can still go ahead. Not an issue because it's end of the day. It's all about 2020, right? It's not about one-day matches because everyone likes the 2020 cricket more. So I would uh, uh, say, what what do you see? I think if I want to put it up like that, so one month, two papers preparation. I think that's very unrealistic expectation to have. But uh, still, do you, or I would put it up in this way to all of them, each and every exam. What are that few things which you would do in the last month of the exam yeah i think that that would be the right question uh, instead of john asking the other way so nitin uh, starting with you what do you think in the last one month what should you do in the last one month just before the exam what i would recommend all to do is uh, the last revision not just uh, it's not like that you have just completed the lectures and you are uh, you are just doing the your first revision it must be your last revision and you are just um, pre- preparing like you uh, on the very next after few days you have to write the exam so like i said before uh, you should have a, a, some topic shortlisted before uh, on which you have to work uh, in the last revision more and on the shortlisted mcqs because uh, all the all the uh, syllabus you can't revise in last one month so if you have pre- previously shortlisted things then you can definitely uh, work on on those specific things and uh, rest uh, it will be manageable i think okay uh, uh, sumit on audit front last month uh so last month i think the the trick is only to uh, keep doing mcqs again and again and again you will you will uh, it will at some point you will feel frustrated that i'm seeing the same question repeatedly but that is only going to help you and uh, make you more confident for the exam the sample mcqs also is what they are asking did anyone try out of all of them uh, yes. yes so i looked at the aicpa sample questions and the good thing is becker is very proactive in already baking these in into their software yeah. but it's good to visit revisit those because uh, those are the most recent questions and there is a higher probability of them being tested so always good to look at that pdf but uh, yeah those are good and another thing that i found very useful was there is this app on google play store it's a free app called let me just look at that app it's called the cpa exam prep app it's basically mcqs and uh, the most beautiful thing about the internet is lot of resources available for free use them search and uh, find these kind of things 
there is one more website i have not used it but lot of people recommend it it's called cpa exam for free or something like that so that today only i have just posted in the group www.cpareviewforfree.com yes. yeah so uh, look for resources don't don't go by uh, see this is available i have to pay for it and get it no there are alternatives available you already have becker becker is obviously a solid software but even if you want to supplement it with something else there are enough things that are available for free so try to use that and a lot of people ask about notes uh whether you should make your own notes or whether you should uh, take somebody else's note two answers for that one uh, on simander uh, portal we have uh, sudha ma'am's notes the most the most beautiful notes i have seen amazing notes effort that and uh, somebody on the becker facebook group for audit has also uploaded some notes uh those are also very good so you don't necessarily have to spend time in creating your own notes people have done it for you take take leverage that and uh, use those it will really help you save time and you focus that time more on uh, studying those notes rather than recreating notes from scratch thank you so much sumit priyal uh, last month preparations uh, yes sir uh, i have given three three papers in september so yeah uh, time management is something uh, which you have uh, discipline time management is something uh, which you have to kept in mind uh for uh, like i have managed like uh, first regulations then audit then bc in september so i just prepared one subject uh, like reg first uh, and then uh, audit when i have just confident about reg i just uh, do the mcqs after that when i am taking audit so don't uh, don't uh, put the subject aside uh, aside and then doing only audit or only reg just do it a uh, review uh, once in a uh, two day or uh, three days gap and just revise it out so the how do we revise the so how do we do that like morning do i need to study audit afternoon do i need to study reg and you no, no not like that it's like uh, if you have if you have done reg like i have taken reg first uh, first 10 days i have uh, given to reg then after that uh, i do uh, i i shift to the uh, i shift to audit and in that period of time i just uh, review that uh, reg uh, time by time it's like one hour for reg to do the mcqs or revision part of that as i have made the notes i review that notes uh, so uh, it's like that uh, i move it like that only in the last months and uh, after that it's a time for mocks and you have to do the mocks of all the subjects so last 10 days i have given uh, all three subjects mocks and just prepared for that like that so it's like that abhi what was your strategy uh, last month preparation after you are over with the like some other lectures backer lectures uh, start doing mcqs again and again daily basis and try to increase the mcqs like uh, for one day you are doing 20 mcqs try to uh, uh, try to do as more and more uh, like in one hour uh, try to do 100, 100 mcqs and uh, after another day do more increase your speed again and again and for the last uh, month preparation uh, i want to say just be a confident that you have done well in previous months that's what i want to say abhi that's that's very uh, i mean One hour, hundred MCQs is uh, uh, too much to uh, kind of uh, I would say digest for some of the people. But I think it's it's normal. I agree completely. Agree with Abhi. You can do uh, even faster. I would say, but uh, I'm not going to say that. Ah, uh, uh, once you have done with the three to four revisions, you can do it. Yeah. Okay. What about far then? One hour, hundred MCQs. No, that, no, 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 that's one. That's one no possible. <laughs> Jitin uh, what was your last month preparation strategy uh, for me it was again uh, i won't go and read anything from my books i will just practice and practice and practice and the the way i would do is that uh, i will give the mocks for sure which is in beckers and then when the mocks are over what i will do i will go to unlimited uh, practice questions and i will create a mock for myself so for far i would put 66 mcqs and you know eight tbs and then i will start the unlimited practice test and i will give it like a mock mm -hmm. exam 
uh that was my strategy and i will do that every single day i will sit for 4 hours and do it i will kind of simulate the exam mm-hmm. through that and once i'm done with the mock exam for the remaining uh hours what i will do i will review it so even if i answered anything right i will see why the rest of the answers are wrong that was very important for me because in a way you are kind of going through four mcqs from one mcq you know what i mean so you know like if one mcq has got four options you i will read through all the four options and see why one is right and the other three are wrong that way you're kind of practicing uh it in that way and that's uh, it it took me a lot of time to review those mock exams during my last month of preparation and that's how i would revise uh, the contents as well so uh, that that's that's my strategy Uh, our june month alumni is were telling that flashcards played a very very important role so when they wrote the june exam i think in india cp exam so the alumni were telling sir flashcards are very important what's your take guys on flashcards do they uh, play a good role in the last month starting with nitin first no sir actually i didn't read uh, flash flashcards <laughs> me too sir i i haven't read it at all like <laughs> no sir i i also didn't <laughs> okay so this is a completely different alumni base we have yeah this month lot of them were telling me that last week they read lot of flash cards because that are all conceptual cards developed by becker so i think people who are there here who are watching us i think you can do that also i don't know it might suit to someone and it might not suit some of them don't even notice flash cards also because they are so busy in practicing mock mcqs and all sir abhi flash cards we practice karna so i think see that guys because last uh, last time the alumni were telling me in, when i did it couple of, a month before with uh, the other alumni they telling that flash cards were very useful so you can use that i think that uh so the next question is did anyone try it a nasba trial exam do we have anything like that nasba trial exam i don't think so Yeah, I don't, I don't think right nasba i think they might be asking about the aicpa question itself i don't think so that we have anything called as nasba uh, we do have professional literature request which we when we give the nts number the normally aicp <laughs> the authoritative literature of becker is doesn't cover everything because it's restricted due to the content but uh, if you uh, if you kind of enter your nts and visit the aicpa website you get the entire access to authoritative literature and practice your question guys so that you can see it and use it so i think we have aicpa sample questions but these are not uh, too many number there are very limited number of questions yeah okay so did you guys uh, do you guys recommend using the becker's final review i think i have not we them. don't have no sir yeah. don't use it no yes sir we don't use it. so the next question is on the business law uh nitin jiten abhi and priyal again uh can can some of them leave the law part or how is it like definitely so not law part and read only tax part in regulation what is your take on reg business law section nitin no definitely not so we have to do business law because most of the questions from the business law part comes straight forward and there is a certain weightage of business law part so if we totally skip that part in our preparation then i don't think that uh, we have a chances that we will pass the regulation exam jiten what's your take on business law like my first take would be don't skip any single chapter <laughs> <laughs> like i like don't skip anything guys just read everything whatever is there in becker's uh, uh when it comes to business law it it's comparatively easy theoretical thing you can apply your conceptual knowledge as well you don't have to mug up everything there are things which you need to remember for sure but it's it's not that hurt for me uh, like as compared to audit if i say audit was kind of difficult for me in order to grasp the theory part but for business law it was it was straight forward like you just read it and practice the questions you will get a grasp of it that's my take comment section we want some key points over reg like how to revise in less time yes sir uh, for me uh, i in the last days i i just saw the uh, video skill master video of peter uh, peter uh, which are very great and i just i just suggest just go through it uh, they are very amazing 
okay so uh, now uh, one very important question is which section to start first i mean everyone will have uh, strategies and all what do you think guys starting off i don't think so we have lost abhi there jitin what do you think which section to start off first is it far or did b c or rec uh i started off like it depends from it and depends from section? yeah it depends from person to person the way i uh, approached it is that i started off with reg because i was comfortable with reg since i have already cleared reg once before and then i wanted to make sure that i clear uh, bec because i had a limited time in the us to appear for bec i had to manage my work schedule accordingly and then i appeared for audit and far like far was the last exam i gave so i think it really depends from person to person uh, how they should approach the subjects uh, i don't have any particular formula in order to what to start nitin what what is your take i know jitin is working in amazon and tax so definitely he will take up tax first uh, so what about you nitin uh, which section you so, are why did you take rec or what i took uh, i took rec first uh, but i don't have any reason behind choosing rec as a my first subject uh, because at that time when i enrolled with same and the rec live classes were going to start for so i asked you so, so you suggested to go with the rec so that's the reason behind the rec and after that uh, my exam got postponed because of covid uh, so i chose i thought that i have enough time to prepare for the far so that's the reason behind giving far as my second subject sumit why you audit first uh, i completely agree with jitin do what you're comfortable with first build your confidence uh, a lot of us are stepping into this course uh, uh, it's a new course for us so do something that you're comfortable in what your comfort zone build that confidence and move to the others uh why first audit then why am i doing the rest of them uh, i didn't want to overthink it so i'm just doing it in alphabetical order it's going to be audit bc far and reg that's my approach okay. i don't like to overthink a lot of things so i leave it to uh, a systematic approach and that's how i'm going to do it real uh, what was your first section and yeah, why i have chosen for far first as a i'm my accounting part is uh, good i think i i think of so uh, i just go for the far then reg then audit then bc it's like okay. that abhi uh, i don't find any reason why to start with the audit reg far and uh, as nitin has said uh, the live classes are going for the far so i started with the far then i go uh, the one thing i want to tell that the if we are going for a audit a uh, theoretical chapter starts with the numerical chapter you you will not get bored in preparing for the exams that's why what, what i want to say and one question comes is, is the excel sheet of becker the uh, in becker product what we have the excel is it similar to what we see in the exam guys what do you think what's your take everyone i uh, haven't used excel at all neither while practicing at home neither at the exam so i am not the right person to answer this Jitin, did you use the excel of what was there in the exam at least for far if not for rec uh, no sir i i didn't uh, use the excel in my practice and in exam also because i was using i was practicing on the calculator that was available in the becker and i found yeah. that more useful because in the physical calculator i i have to uh, move my hands but i was practicing on that i was more comfortable in the becker calculator only and i would recommend all of all the students to practice on that calculator only I agree uh sumit did you see that using ah uh, yes yes i i use that excel uh, i use excel for everything uh, and i did use that excel uh, the one thing that you have to be careful about is not as user friendly as your desktop version of microsoft excel keyboard shortcuts and all that will not work as functionally as they do in microsoft excel but it's uh, it's halfway there i mean it's usable and uh, somebody who's comfortable with uh, excel more than paper they can definitely use it no issues uh, priyal did you use the excel yes sir, i use in bc uh, it it is very useful in bc as you, uh, there is a calculation and do uh, so it's good to use in bc i think so so it's like that add minus plus uh, divide and multiply but uh, for the things uh, 
excel is good for bc i must say abhi did you use excel in uh, far or audit or bc or reg no i haven't used uh, in any of this i have just used the paper pen the uh, um, prometic used to provide okay the, some of them were telling that sir do we also get paper and pen uh, we need to send a request to nasba for that or no no they will provide, mm, they will provide. Uh, they will provide sir okay so we don't need to send a separate request to nasba for a so i thought pencil we need to send a request to nasba so that is also now not there or what is i it? think sir it was pre covid where you had to uh, put a request for but post covid they will provide you with scratch paper and pen as far as i know everybody who was walking in they were giving them one uh, scratch paper one calculator and one pen that was standard for everyone okay okay so i think that is one of the important things because on the exam day i think nts is very important and again passport and all please do carry guys because that are some of the key things what we see i think one day before uh, just go to that prometric center and just do a test also because uh, now to covid time is there so no one will take a risk so i uh, typically used to go a couple of days before to the center and check all everything the distance and all because we uh, that is something which is very important uh, so fozia has a question what would you guys suggest on how to go about a section first read the chapter or go through the video first first read the chapter or go through the video first along with practicing the question and sins what's the study strategy starting off with uh, jitin yes uh, i just followed uh, what was in becker so i started watching the videos uh, making notes on this textbook and once the video got over i kind of read it once and then practice the mcqs and the sims so uh, i just followed jitin. the yeah i also followed the same strategy sir the becker man videos after that mcqs then okay. sims so man uh yeah the same so so the way they teach in the becker lecture is they page by page in the book itself so they are basically guiding you through the book so it's best to do the lecture first uh, underline whatever uh, they ask you to underline and um, annotate whatever notes they ask you to annotate that's very important because when you come back to revise those keywords will really help you okay priyan yes the same same form uh, same thing for me also uh okay. i think the same goes for everyone watching lectures skill master videos mcqs and attempt simulations okay, yeah because what they do with the lecture is uh, they break it down for you in very simple language so if yes. you were to start reading it first it might appear a little bit of greek latin to you so it's better to follow the lecture uh, and then read the book again uh, i want to say the sipal sir and suresh sir done a great job in far they have uh, Majabi, I am very inspired uh, in the far subject. I think, guys, far. Uh, I know F eight, F nine, F ten. Becker is very, very good. So uh, I am telling <laughs> that in a sarcastic <laughs> manner because uh, typically they tend to read uh, the pages and also that's why we are also there. Apart from Becker, the so wherever you require the conceptual knowledge, I think you could always refer to and that's what Krishna is asking. So first, do you go through some and make classes videos or do one of them? So that is something, uh, guys. It depends uh, how quicker you want to complete the qualification because some of the classes go in a proper speed and proper pace. So if you are looking to go ahead and try to read it from the software, I leave it up to you. But people who are very new, haven't touched the book since ages and all, are very weaker in concepts. I strongly suggest you to go through the live classes or the recorded classes of Simandar and then take it up Becker. So that's how you'll need to maintain the uh, pace of the subject as well. So I think Krishna, that kind of answers your question as well. So Keshav, I have one question: When will audit batch be starting again? Keshav, this is not a right platform to ask all those things. So I think alumni is will definitely not answer that. That is something which I need to answer. So typically we don't want to attend yes, more classes. We don't want to <laughs> come again and attend all or go through the Becker video or go through Simander. They have had enough of uh, uh, CPA now, so they are well and good. So uh, what's next, guys? So after CPA, I think 
we have taken noida far it has been amazing time i know it's not an easy thing to come at the night 9 o'clock talk about almost till 10:30 pm and so very grateful and thank you so much for giving that respect to me coming up on shorter notice especially nitin and even abhi jitain and priyal it's it's not an easy thing to come on a sunday and uh, come like that uh, so thank you so much so any last uh, thoughts jitain what after cpa what's next on your mind in amazon uh for me it was uh, kind of adding a feather uh because i'm not going to leave amazon and go anywhere else to be very honest right now so it was nothing like after cpi i had something in mind which i'm going to follow now it was nothing like that uh it was always being just to add to my qualification which might help me in my future growth uh that was the ideology behind doing cpa so nothing planned as such uh, to be particular so i hope you're not going to hit the gym again jitin to reduce further weight Oh no! I'm gonna build muscles now. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Priyal? I know that you will be back of me for placing. So while are watching this, guys, so they are not chart accountants. Uh, so this is one. Ha! Huh, one more very important question before I close it off uh, to Jiten. Jiten, I know Priyal have come from a CA background. She have at least done CA inter. Abhi have also done CA. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. you haven't been from that ca background so did you think that that was very difficult to cope up with or do you think that a base of ca is really required at cpo or do you think that are all the rumors and if you are very good in studying or to stick to the concept that is uh, sufficient because we have a lot of bcom plus mcom guys a lot of them are there in simandar today and not of them not from ca or cs background so what is your take jitain on this last question sorry guys i'm just taking one additional question for a non ca student because that is something we want to take it up because everyone keep criticizing shripal sir jab dekho ca inter ca ca inter ca so that's where i thought i'll take up a completely non ca question today jitain yeah. what so yeah as i mentioned mcom was my last qualification which i did and i haven't delved into any other professional courses to be honest uh you just got to study like uh, there is a famous saying by another uh, course reviewer if you study you will pass <laughs> so i will just quote him here uh, you got to study you got to get get clarity on your on the concepts and you got to practice focus devote your time you will pass uh there is no rocket science in there you just have to dedicate your time that's how i felt thank you so much uh, jitain i think that was a terrific bit of one and a half hour of session with everyone sumit uh, nitin jitain uh, the scores what i see today at simandar i don't know lot of them keep telling me sripal kahin galat to nahi dal raha hai na linkedin pe 98 94 beta हमको दिखा दो सर कहाँ पे वो लोग सीसीड है सो दैट्स वेयर स्क्रीनशॉट भेज देंगे सर सो लॉट ऑफ देम सेड लाइक 94s 98s 97s 93s सो एवरीवन वर स्पेकुलेटिंग इज दिस राइट सो दैट वाज वन ऑफ द रीजन आल्सो टू कंडक्ट दिस वीडियो सेशन सो एट लीस्ट पीपल काइंड ऑफ सी दैट यस दे आर लाइव पीपल हु आर डूइंग दैट सो देयर इज नथिंग दैट व्हिच कैन नॉट बी अचीव्ड एंड थैंक यू सो मच गाइस फॉर अटेंडिंग दिस एंड गिविंग अ टाइम i hope that this session would have solved a lot of the issues and a lot of the questions which you had in the mind anything which you still feel that which have not been covered because uh, due to the limitation of time because i said them only 9 to 10 and they have stick to 10 30 and i don't know after the session what will they tell me so i am not uh, uh, commenting on that but if any questions are there i think they are very much reachable on linkedin jitain nitin abhi uh, sumit april and also they are well active on linkedin and you can always connect it via telegram groups i have said them none of them to exit from the groups also uh, who all are pa- uh, passing because i want them to be in that group so that they keep studying they keep seeing the mcqs they keep solving some of the questions which the students have so uh, thank you so much guys thanks a lot for uh, coming in jitain thank you jitain thank, thank you nitin thank you so much thank you priyo thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.